What's up, guys? It's me, CJ, with Double Shots. Joined with me is Dylan with Double Shots. Yo! And make sure to... Like and subscribe to this channel. Comment if you want to see something else. And today's video is going to be... The Top 10 Offensive Linemen from the 2020 NFL Season. Disclaimer, guys. I am not being biased about this. It's all my... It's my opinion. PFF rating, their stats, and their highlights. And, yeah, and their improvement from different years to this year. And their past years, too. All right, and starting off with number 10 is Gabe Jackson. He was traded by... Why, Raiders? Why would you trade a key stud? He was goaded in Houston. Like, it was like a top 10, top 10 offensive lineman in Houston. Still a top 10 offensive lineman before the Raiders traded him to the Seahawks. He'd probably still be good for the Seahawks. Russell Wilson should be happy since they got him. At least, I hope. I'm not a Seahawks fan, though. Uh, number nine is Mitchell Schwartz. He got released by the Chiefs, I know. He was still a good offensive lineman from last season. If he didn't get injured, the Chiefs would probably win the Super Bowl. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all i got to say. He didn't have that many sacks last year. Oh, I got this list upside down. And number eight is Joe Thune. He was the Patriots guard for, like, five years. Pretty good for the Patriots. Then now he is a chief, and I think he'll do pretty good for Patrick Mahomes. And uh, number seven is David Bakhtiari. I hope I said that right. Um, he's a very good offensive lineman. If he didn't get injured in the postseason, Rodgers would probably do better in the championship, and they probably could have made the Super Bowl. And Rodgers probably would be happy with this team. And he's a good offensive lineman. And number six, you guys are going to be hating in the comments. That you guys would be like, yeah, he needs to be higher. I'm just putting him here because that's a solid spot for someone who's in his 30s now. Trent Williams, he's getting up in the age, you know. I don't think he would, I think he would still be good, but I think he would be starting to de digress, you know. And number five is Garrett Bowles. You guys would be like, <laughs> no, he should not be top ten. Yes, he is top ten. His improvement, you guys are like, yeah, he's a one-hit wonder. No, no, he's not a one. He, he probably could be a one-hit wonder. He's pretty good though. He was pretty good. He had this is this was his breakout season. He went from a year ago being booed from the fans, boo, eject him, eject him, because he allowed like he had like twenty penalties and like a lot of sacks he took up. And wow, that was terrible in twenty nineteen. And they uh, did not um resign him on his rookie deal, but then when they saw what he did this year, they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to sign you. I'm going to give you like 20 million. Yeah, let's go. And I'm like, that probably worked out for him better that time. All right, number four is Quentin Nelson. You guys are like, no, he should be higher. The King of Pancakes, pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, he's like one of my favorite offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. Isn't he like a three-time pro bowler and like a two or three-time first team all pro? Wow, that's good. Isn't that? All right, and number three is, oh, you guys are going to say he should be number two. It's number three is Corey Lindsley. He's now a Charger. He broke out, like, he he was at Packers for a while, and he finally broke out. But just just disclaimer, I don't think he would be that good going as a Charger, really. He just did good last year because look at the last player who became a Charger offensive lineman from last year. He was he was with the Packers with Corey Lindsley, David David Bakhtiari. It was Brian Bulaga. Did he do really good last year? You guys don't even talk about him. I don't know if he got injured or what. I didn't research him. I probably should have researched him. But I know he got I know he got I know he signed with the Chargers. Alright, and number two is Wyatt Taylor. I tell him. I hope I pronounced your name right. Uh, sorry if I didn't. Uh yeah. Um he was pretty good. He broke out as a Brown, and wow, that Browns offensive line. Remember his the 0 and 16 offensive line was so terrible. Like I mean, like it was dog water. Like literally dog water. Like straight. Yeah, yeah, straight dog water. Well, he finally broke out with a 91 PFF rating. Wow. You guys are gonna call me biased because I'm wearing a Cowboys jersey. I'm not being biased. He he was the only good player on a terrible, terrible Cowboys offensive line, and you're like, hmm, how about this one player? I can't remember his name, actually. I'm a Cowboys fan. I should remember his name. Is it not Connor McGovern? Oh, I can't remember his name. 
Um, but yeah, Zach, uh, Zach Martin is number one on this list. He was a very good offensive lineman before he got injured. And I can't remember the other dude's name, but he was pretty good. He took the most snaps from any, just research, he took the most snaps, snaps from the 2020 season, and you'll see his name. And he only allowed a 5% pressure rate. And you're like, yeah, that's pretty good. He should be on this list. All right, that's going to conclude it for this video. I hope you guys will like and subscribe. And please turn on that notification bell and comment down below what video we should do next. And see you in the next video. Peace.